Daughters, sisters, warriors. Freedom has been won for you, but the world is still a battlefield. We, women, must put on the full armor of God, ready to stand our ground. After we have done everything to stand. Stand firm then, with a belt of truth buckled around our waist, with the breastplate of righteousness guarding the heart, and with the shoes of gospel peace that make us ready for the race. We grasp the shield of faith, so the flaming arrows don't stand a chance. With our minds protected by the helmet of salvation, we can wield the word of God, the razor-sharp sword of the Spirit. Gone are the days of worldly fragility, so throw on the armor forged by divinity to bring the slaves out of captivity as we walk this life in our own true liberty. Hello, welcome to She, I'm Precious. And I'm Narissa, and we're in Freedom Church Cape Town, and we want to welcome you from wherever you're joining us from. Yes, and we are so excited to be joining locations from all over the world as we gather together for the next installment for She Liberty. Our senior pastor, Heather Snowzo, last time brought us a very amazing word about truly living in Christ's freedom. Let's stay tuned for what Pastor Heather has for us tonight. Come on, so good. But first, we're going to kick off this event with some worship. So let's dance and sing and give God all the praise. When light has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength.
people come together, strange as name is, oh, but he's one. Children of generations of every nation of kingdom come. Come church. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high, don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from.
his kingdom come. Oh, he's here and he's moving. Oh, he longs to speak to us. Oh, he's here. And he's moving, would you open up your heart? Oh, he's here, and he's moving, oh, he longs to speak to us. Oh, he's here, and he's moving, oh, we open up our hearts. Cause out here I find Record your message. Hi, Emma. It's me, Liz. Uh, it's been a while. Um, we didn't quite leave on the best of terms the last time we spoke, did we? Let's see. 
<laughs> if I can get this right. Well, I've been a jerk. I can see it now. When I saw the trust balance date gave us, I took it and I ran. You were right, as always. And I should have listened, but I didn't. Instead, I yelled at you and said words I now wish I could take back. But I can't. I was wild. I was stupid. I squandered everything. You no doubt saw the newspapers. I'm so ashamed. But when all the money was gone, so were the friends, reporters, and party invites. They turned their backs on me, just like you said they would. What place would take me after the past I've had? I don't blame them. I ended up begging and hoping that I could pay for a bed set. That place leaked like a sieve and stank so bad. You know, uh, I was going to end it last week. But then I remembered Dad. And you. And everyone at the firm. So I decided to try and come back. I headed towards the firm's reception to ask for a job. I wasn't even going to use my own name. I felt so ashamed. But Dad was there at the entrance. It was as though he had been waiting for me all these years. It was so overwhelming. I looked really rough. I had not had a proper shower in over a week. My hair was dreadful and oh my word, did I stink. <laughs> but he just threw his arms around me. He held me so tight and he cried his eyes out. I had never felt love like it. I don't deserve it. <laughs> but he gave it to me anyway. I don't deserve this second chance. I know that. But that is what he's given me and I'm so, so grateful. So, anyway, I wanted to say that I'm so sorry I hurt you. Dad's holding a welcome home party for me tonight. I heard from Livy that you don't want to come. I don't blame you, though. It's not like I deserve this, but Dad insisted. You know, Dad, always one for celebrations. <laughs> but I miss you. I want to see you again so much. I hope you will come. Um, yeah, uh, perhaps I'll see you there. Bye. Wow, what a powerful and beautiful creative video. Isn't it amazing how God, our Father, welcomes us home? So beautiful. And now we're going to hear Elizabeth's prodigal daughter's testimony all the way from Kigali. And then we're going to head over to Pastor Heather to hear the message God has in store for us. Hi, my name is Elizabeth and I'm here in Kigali, Rwanda, sharing with you my story today. Uh, many of you might not know, but I'm actually, I was born in Angola, um, but I'm also Portuguese, but I spent a lot of my life actually growing up in the UK. So in Angola, you know, I was in church from a very young age since I was born pretty much. Um, I think when I moved to Portugal, uh, I was five years old, but I didn't understand why, you know, we had to go to church, but I would always love being there. Um, I made a decision uh, to follow Jesus when I was 12. Um, my mom, she led me through the salvation prayer. And although I didn't really understand exactly what that meant, I knew that I would I was saved and I knew that I was going to heaven. The next few years then were very different from my upbringing. You know, I was brought up in a Christian household, but you know, this next part of my story would take me away from that. And so I went to university at the age of 18, um, where I studied um, in Bristol for three years. And my first year of university was very interesting because it was the first time that in my life that I made choices for myself. And I would have preferred to have, you know, um, chosen better things, but I unfortunately chose the wrong path. I decided that I wanted to be in a relationship. And so I got into a relationship with someone who was not a believer. Um, and that was really when my life started to change. Um, because I started myself noticing that I was changing. I started noticing that, 
you know, the way that I was dressing was different. The music that I would listen to, even the people that I was hanging around with, it was all influenced by what I was around at that time. And it was just pure darkness. And that is the only way I can describe it. I felt darkness inside of me. I felt darkness around me. I was trying to fill that void and fill those gaps in the world and not in church and not, um, you know, with Jesus. I was partying almost every night and I was trying to fill this void um, that left me empty. I remember coming back from a party and it must have been around 4, 4, 5 a.m. And I remember laying down in bed and looking up at the ceiling and thinking to myself, what are you doing? This isn't you. This isn't who God has made you to be. And so I met someone and this was really a toxic uh, situation that I was in, that I found myself in. Um, there was a lot of cheating, there was a lot of gaslighting, manipulation um, and emotional abuse, which really affected me and my mental state. And so this one Saturday, my mum, she calls me and she's like, what are you doing tomorrow? Tomorrow being Sunday. And I knew that I was going out that night. And she said, we're coming to pick you up because we, we want to go to Freedom Church tomorrow. And I said, okay, you know, there wasn't like a, a hesitation on my part because although I wasn't in church and I wasn't around Christians, I knew that I, that's what my soul was longing for and my spirit. And so I spent then the summertime um, coming to church and staying away and I would show up and then I would stay away for a few more weeks. Um, and that continued until the autumn of 2018 where I found myself traveling to New York to see this person that I was dating, um, only to find out that they were already dating someone else and it was pretty serious. And so I came back to the UK after that trip, broken, battered, bruised, um, and I was just done with life. I, I was just done. I didn't want to be alive anymore. And I had all these thoughts, these really dark, crazy thoughts going around. Uh, there came a moment where I had to choose whether I wanted to be fully in for God or not. And I really felt God, you know, he was handing me those options, but I was taking my time because I really wanted to be serious. I didn't want to just come back and be flaky. And I just remember crying out to God and asking God, God, please change my life in 2019. Like, I don't want to continue living this way. I don't want to continue being lukewarm. I don't want to continue being in and out. And so I just started being obedient and I just started coming and week by week, I started seeing myself change. I think for me, from a young age, I knew that I had this adventurous spirit. I knew that, um, that my life would be in church. I knew that my life would revolve around church, but I was afraid of letting go. I was afraid of giving up control and my plans because I didn't know what God had in store for me. Um, and so grateful to God for just the redemption that he gave to me and he brought to my life. Let me encourage you that this is the best place to be in community and to give yourself wholly and fully to Jesus because he is the one who can satisfy every of our desires and every need. Ladies, welcome to She Liberty part two. And I'm so excited about this message today. You know, it's the truth. We talked about the truth last time, setting us free. The truth of God sets us free and about how we lost our freedom through disobedience. And so obedience is so key. Obedience to his truth, obedience to his word. And if you didn't catch that message, please go back and have a listen to it. But I hope already you are feeling a greater freedom and that anything that you've been limited in, that God is changing that in your life. I mean, I've got to say, I feel freer than ever right now because I am in the middle of moving house. It's been a massive job. I didn't realize how much stuff I was able to collect and hoard away over 15 years. And so I have made so many trips to the charity shop. I've given so many things away because we are moving into a caravan. So I feel very free right now. And I think it's going to be a great season for me walking into this freedom and talking to you about She Liberty. Um, and while I was packing, I found something quite amazing. It really touched my heart. So I just wanted to share it with you. Um, and basically, you know what those drawers are like when you're looking through those drawers and they are full 
of so many cards, papers, envelopes, things that you've had for years that like, I don't know why they're even still there. So I was looking through and sorting these um, drawers. And I got to the stage where I, I was nearly at the end of it and I thought, do you know what? I'm just gonna pick up the rest and throw it away. And I thought, I'll just have one more look. And then I came across something that was sent to me in 1995, which is about 27 years ago. And those of you that have been reading the Firestarter book will have heard of this lady. She was the lady that I phoned uh, when Gary was, well, when we were facing bankruptcy. And I found this card that was sent from her and it's so prophetic that I wanted to share it with you. And it actually says on the front, Liberty, which is where, where we're at right now is She Liberty. And it's so prophetic because it's got the British flag and the American flag. And obviously at that time when she gave me this card, she had no idea and I had no idea that three of my sons were gonna be living in America. So, and how America was gonna be a big part of our lives as well. So also on this card, it has Isaiah 61, which is one of my favorite scriptures. It also has the quill. You can see the quill on the card and that represents warrior poet, one of our DNA. And there's another, you might be able to see it in the corners, another one of our DNA, which is everything's a gift. And it's such an amazing card. I want to sh share it with you because it really touched my heart. And even when we started out, we had the tambourine and that's all we had. There's even a picture of the tambourine on that. So I just thought that is such a prophetic picture of She Liberty, which is what we're going through right now. And so we're on this journey together. And that was Yes, it just meant so much to me that I wanted to share it with you, with you. So my question for you today is, what are you feeding on? What are you feeding on? What well are you drinking from? You know, we've got to remember that we are eternal beings. You know, we feed our flesh so easily and readily, don't we? We feed our flesh with food, not just food, but cravings and desires that we have. And, you know, we've got to remember that we are, you know, we are also spirit beings. We, we can so easily neglect our soul. So we are spirit beings, spiritual beings, and we are in a spiritual battle. And our fight isn't against flesh and blood, is it? It's against the principalities and power of this world. But we know that God has the ultimate victory. And I love that so much. You know, his cross and his resurrection gave us the victory and the freedom that we can walk in. But we are spiritual beings and God has made us to crave. We are made to crave, but we're made to crave the things of God. And we are all made with this inbuilt hole. And until we find God to fill that hole, we can end up filling our lives with so many other things and feeding from so many other things until we fill that God-shaped hole with God when we find him. So where we drink from is what we become actually. And that is so true, I've seen that so much in life, that where we drink from is what we become. We used to have a little canary and it was bright yellow, it was really cute, tiny little yellow fluffy canary. And, um, but it was called a red factor and the reason for that was we used to feed it this seed that had red dye in it and as it fed from this seed it started its wings and feathers started to become red instead of yellow because it started to become where it was feeding from and it started to change color and it impacted it in that way but you know we become what we feed from um, and throughout my life, I've noticed that even you meet people and if they're in a walking group, they, it be, almost becomes their identity, whether they're there with their fleeces, their big walking boots, their hiking boots, their maps, and they talk about routes and places they've been and places they've seen. Or you might be in the cycling club and there's, you know, people dressed in lycra from head to toe. Uh, not for me, I have to say. 
but you know it almost becomes part of their identity because that's where they drink from that's the people that they spend time with and even people groups you know uh, people you spend time with if it's somebody that's living on their feelings and they're insecure people or they're negative and critical it is going to rub off on you and sometimes I've even met Christians and I'm like oh you know we believe in the same God you know we're Christians and then you start talking to them and you think you're drinking from a different well to me. And if they're in a place that's perhaps more religious, it's gonna come over in their language, how they speak, even maybe sometimes how they look. But when you go around the world and you visit a Freedom Church, we are a certain tribe and we are a certain people. And it's the well that we drink from, our DNA, and we are absolute wild dogs. I can go to Cambodia, to India, and when I walk into a Freedom Church, it's like, yes, these are my people and I have come home. So sometimes our cravings can become unhealthy. And I just wanna look at social media for a moment because that is such a big part of our lives. Um, you know, it gives us an appetite for the wrong things sometimes. And you know, even the scroll on your phone, what's it called? It's called a feed. And we feed from that thing nearly every day. And it doesn't fill us. It leaves us actually feeling empty. And it leaves us, to, you know, it tells us that we're not enough sometimes. And it gives us an appetite for the wrong things. And it can become insatiable. And a lot of what we're listening to and watching is opposite to the word of God. You know, it can be so subtle where it can creep in and make you doubt your faith. It can bring in that liberalism, that self-doubt even, you know, where we lose confidence because it's there saying you're not good enough or, oh, if only I had this or that in my life. We start to feel sorry for ourselves because maybe we haven't got those things. You know, why do we like that stuff? Why are we feeding ourselves that stuff? I mean, I opened up my phone the other day, and this is a perfect example. I opened up my phone and an advert hit me in the face and it said, are you lonely? If you're lonely, I can help you fix that. And the next little clip was a woman, a beautiful woman opening this box of tissues and inside was this beautiful handbag that was probably thousands of pounds worth of money. And it was basically saying, if you're lonely, then if you have this bag, you won't be lonely anymore because you will be noticed, you will be popular and you will be loved and you'll have lots of friends. I mean, what a load of rubbish. Are you gonna to choose to listen to that or are you gonna choose the truth of God? Because God says, I put the lonely in family. So some of the people I know with the most stuff are the least free people that I know because it takes so much of their time and energy maintaining their stuff and it doesn't bring them freedom at all. So we can listen to so many lies from the enemy and again, we need to, to listen to the truth of God. You know, you wouldn't let anyone else say those things about you, say that stuff about you. So why do we feed ourselves that stuff? You know, and then you end up thinking that stuff about yourself, believing that stuff. You know, why do you feed yourself that stuff? When he says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. End of. That is his truth about you. And that is all you need to know. And there's so many other examples of scripture or truths that I could have chosen. But you know, next time you look in the mirror, say to yourself, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made in the image of God. Wow, that is so amazing, isn't it? And yet our phones suggest things to us that, you know, are so wrong and so many lies that come through our phones, you know, suggesting things to us. I mean, I can't believe sometimes that my phone acts like it knows me and is suggesting things to me because I'm a certain age or because, oh, you might like this reel, or you might like this TikTok. And I'm like, you don't even know me, how dare you suggest? And it just reminds me of Eve in the garden when the enemy came and what did he do? He was suggesting things to her. Did God really say this? Did God really say that? Why not try this? And it could make a difference and give you a greater freedom when it did not do that at all. And you might think, well, social media isn't a problem for me. I'm not interested in any of that stuff. But maybe you feasted on the news through the whole of COVID and maybe you've come out of this um, season feeling more anxious and worried and fearful than ever before. You know, and yet he says, his truth says, don't be anxious for nothing. 
And, you know, he tells us not to worry about things, and yet we can find ourselves in that place because of what we've been feeding on. So we are on a constant feed that doesn't fill us, and social media is actually designed to starve you so that you keep going back to it. It's like that comfort food. It can become addictive, and it's like the devil you know. So we need to remember who we are. We need to remember that we are changelings. That's one of our DNA, is that we need to change and choose a new way. And what I love about God is he has got everything that we need. Everything you need is within him. He is our father and he knows what's best for us. God is my father and he's got everything I want. Why would I go to the enemy for something? when he's got everything and he wants to freely give it to you. So I want to suggest right now that maybe it's a season to come off social media. You know, we're talking about She Liberty and if these things are uh, suggesting things to us and feeding us lies, then maybe we need to empty ourselves of that toxic stuff and actually have a detox and a fast from social media or maybe you need to come off it altogether and you will start to see the flavor or taste the flavors again oh that garlic and those onions taste so delicious so good and you've forgotten what truth really tastes like taste and see that the lord is good his word his truth is so good for our souls his spirit is truth and it's the truth that will set us free you know but sometimes truth can be an acquired taste and when you've lived with lies all your life, you know, we're born into that sinful nature that gives us a taste for the wrong things until we find God to fill that hole in our lives. So we're going to have a look at the story of the prodigal son. You've already seen that amazing creative of a modern version of this story, but it's about these two sons that where the one uh, comes to his father and he wants to be free. He wants to throw off all restraint and live for himself and find that true freedom that he thinks he's going to find. And he comes to his father and he says, I want what's coming to me right now. And you know, he wasn't running from something that was bad. He didn't have a bad life. He had a great life. His father loved him. And, but he was running from his father. Sadly, he was running away from his father. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. There, undisciplined and dissipated, I had to look that one up, it means overindulging in sensual pleasures. Um, he wasted everything that he had and after he had gone through all of his money there was a bad famine throughout that country and he began to feel it. He signed on with this guy who assigned him to the fields to slop the pigs. He didn't find freedom at all. In fact he wasted all his time and investment that his father had given him and he had become what he was drinking from. He had become popular as well until he ran out of money. They weren't true friends and he lost his freedom. Yes, yeah, so sometimes we also can run away from God, but maybe more in our hearts and the decisions that we make and the choices that we make. And we wonder why we're not close to him anymore. We wonder why we're not close to our father and maybe why we're not hearing him, why, we're, why he's not speaking to us. And it's because we've moved away and we've lost freedom over our decisions and so we're away from him in our hearts and it also says in his word you know we we need to acknowledge him in all his ways and he will make your path straight that is another truth from God don't walk away from God he is the one that will make your path straight so the prodigal son he finds himself being hungry he would have even eaten the corn cobs from the pig slop but no one would give him any and that suddenly brought him to his senses he said all those farm hands working for my father sit down to three meals a day and here i am starving to death i'm going back to my father so he repented that is such a key thing that we repent and a repentance isn't a one-off thing repentance is a way of life we should this is all part of being a changeling is that we should repent and be sorry. You know, when we've sinned against God, you know, he was saying, I don't deserve to be his son anymore, but we need to say sorry and come running back to the father. And of course the father was there with open arms, just like God is for us. He is there with open arms. He's like, 
bring, bring clean clothes, bring the family ring. Let's put sandals on his feet. Let's get the prized calf, the fatted calf. We are gonna feast. My son who was dead is now alive. So going back to verse 13, it says that he ran to a distant country running from his father. He squandered wealth and lost everything that he had. And we think, don't we, we hear that story and think that is so terrible, but what are we squandering? What are you squandering right now in your life? You know, those unhealthy cravings that take us away from our father can keep you spending, can keep you hungry, can keep you thirsty, and eventually we can spend everything as well and find that our character and our heart is away from our father. And if you think when the prodigal son left, he went to a distant land. There were no mobile phones in those days. He lost complete touch with his father. He, wasn't, he couldn't write letters, he couldn't phone him, he couldn't FaceTime him, and he lost touch with his father. And also there was so much shame involved. He almost didn't want to go back to his dad. He wanted to be his servant because he felt so ashamed. And yet his dad was there with open arms. And I just want to take a moment to look at the older son as well, because he was there the whole time. He was almost like the loyal, faithful one, but, and yet he wasn't free at all. You know, the son came back and he was repentant. He was sorry. And, you know, he was set free, but the older son was so full of bitterness. He was not free. He was jealous. He was unforgiving to his brother. And so let's not be there judging one another where we're at because we're all at different stages of our walk in freedom. So we can find ourselves away from our Father in our hearts, our thoughts, our decisions and our choices. And we can also waste time and money as well. You know, but change is what we need to pursue. You know, God has the grace for us. The Father, he was there with open arms. Let's choose faith over fear every time. You know, don't leave your father and be deceived into thinking that you are gonna be freer without him. We've got to remember that our father's fridge is full. And I think about my boys when they come away, uh, back home from being away, I make sure my fridge is full with all their favorite things and they can just go in and help themselves. Let's remember that that's what God's fridge is like for us. Our father's fridge is full of great stuff. And yet it was a famine that brought him back to the father. You know, if it brings you back to the father, a famine can be actually a good thing. And I really think that some of us are still feeling the effects of the famine, of COVID even, you know, of that basic human contact where we haven't been able to be around people for so long. You know, I've, I don't know about you, but I've never had to think, how am I gonna greet this person? Do I hug them? Do I shake their hand? I've never had to think that before. And now we have to, I mean, I went to hug someone the other week at church and they like kind of step back three paces um, and I had to apologize because it's things have changed haven't they and we need to find our way back so I think maybe that's why I wanted to do she liberty because you know we are feeling more anxious and fearful as a people more than ever before and yet we need to crave the things of God we need to crave him you know we don't want the things of God enough sometimes we need to crave those things crave his truth crave his spirit so it says in verse 16 that he longed to fill his stomach with stuff that was fit for an animal you know sometimes our thoughts and you know the choices that we make will leave us feeling full for maybe five minutes. Why do we do that? You know, you don't belong on some porn hub at three o'clock in the morning. He hasn't made you to do that. Don't let your cravings kill you or put you back in chains. And yet in a moment, he came to his senses and remembered my father's fridge is full. So we gotta say goodbye to the enemy. He wants to keep you in this change. He wants to keep you eating with the pigs. But I've got a father whose fridge is full. You know, we've got to get that acquired taste back. We've been eating those lies and we need to choose truth over the lies. Why do we crave those things? Why do we crave what we hate when we know there's a better way? And I just want to read this scripture to you. It says in Romans 7, For as long as we live that old way of life, doing whatever we felt we could get away with, sin was calling most of the shots as the old law 
code hemmed us in and this made us all the more rebellious. All we had to show for it was death, but now we're no longer shackled to that domineering mate of sin and out from under all those oppressive regulations and fine print, we're free to live a new life in the freedom of God. But it's because Christ, when he died, he took that entire rule dominated way of life down with him and left it in the tomb, leaving you free to marry a resurrection life and bear offspring of a faith for God. How beautiful is that? You know, he didn't just go to the cross and die for us. Three days later, he rose again. He was resurrected. He overcame death. It doesn't get much freer than that. We have got that freedom, resurrection power in our life to live in the freedom that he came to give us. It doesn't get much freer than that. So it's our choice, isn't it? Are we going to keep going back to the enemy's chain restaurant? He wants us back in shackles, or are we going to go to the father's fridge, which is free indeed? Now, his ways are higher than our ways, and we need to learn his ways of freedom. It says in Numbers 11 that, um, you know, you know, when the Israelites, they came out of Egypt and they were set free, it says the rabble among them had a strong craving. And the Israelites also wept again and said, if only we had meat to eat. You know, they were having manna from heaven, which was a complete miracle. And yet through the rabble and the complaining and the lack of gratitude, you know, the rabble started to say, oh, if only we could have meat. And they started to complain about the very miracle that God had set them free. And it's funny how we can remember sometimes the fish. And yet at the time it wasn't that good, you know, it was full of bones. And yet God was pro providing this amazing feast for them every day. And it's like, you know, you can take the people, you can take the Israelites out of Egypt, but actually sometimes that sinful nature, Egypt is still in you. And, you know, some of those old cravings are still there. Don't be surprised sometimes. That's why we need to learn this new way of freedom. So the truth so easily gets crowded out, doesn't it? We could crowd the, the, you know, the truth gets crowded out by the rabble, by the noise of this world, by the noise of the enemy. When Canaan's grapes were right there for the taking, right in front of them. You know, God wants to remove the rabble. He wants to remove the noise, the feed of the enemy, the feed of this world. And he wants us to make space. So we need to come and be ready to empty ourselves tonight, you know, for the, from the cravings of the wrong feed, from the wrong place. He wants to fill you with his desire, his Holy Spirit desire. You know, where we drink from is where we become. You know, what, you desire, what are you desiring tonight? What are you craving? Are you craving after the things of God? Because that is gonna bring you true freedom. So I just want to say, stop running from the Father. We've got to turn. We've got to change. We've got to repent tonight. We've got to come to him and run. You know, his arms are open wide. You know, the kingdom of God, I love the kingdom of God because he leaves the 99 and he comes for the one. You know, when I was away from God, he left the 99 and he came after me. Maybe that's you tonight. Maybe you're the one that he's coming after tonight and you need to come back to him. You know, the Holy Spirit is revealing things to you tonight and he reveals things because he wants to heal you tonight. God wants to fill the emptiness. You know, that God is drawn to emptiness. So when we empty ourselves of these things, these desires, these cravings, the Holy Spirit wants to come and fill you with his truth and freedom that will set you free. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He wants to fill the emptiness. So the more we crave after him, the more we feed from him, the more we're gonna become like him. Where are you feeding from tonight? Where are you spending time? Are you spending time with him? Are you in his presence? We need to be like the prodigal son. We need to say we're sorry. We need to repent on a regular basis. We need to choose to change and we need to give him our first and our best. Thank you so much, Pastor Heather, for that word. Ladies, there is definitely something for everyone in that message. How can you act on this word tonight? 
If you want to respond to the Father calling you home, then please do reach out either online or the leader in your campus. So good. What an amazing night. Ladies, thank you for joining us across the globe. Remember, you can keep up to date with She through our social media at Freedom Church She. So if you're not already following, please do so. And we'll see you in the next installment of She Liberty, where we'll have a guest pastor bringing us the word. Whoa, can't wait for that. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.